Hey, yo, what's up, guys? Baby Bear 4812 coming at you one more time. I uh, apologize for the delay. Uh, thank you for being patient. I, I, I took five or six days off, haven't uploaded anything, so I hope you didn't miss me too much. Uh, but if you did, I'm back. And uh, it should be consistent from now on. And I tried to take care of a couple things. So, yeah, thank you for your patience. Um, anyways, I'm coming at you today with what, what seems to have uh, been Google, one of Google's like most super masked, most super asked, most frequently asked super questions. I don't know where the word super goes into that sentence, but um, one of the, their most recently and infrequently asked questions, which is the, the longest increasing path in a matrix. Um, and I'll just to show it to you, they, so Leeko kind of updates their, their premium list of, of questions and, and most recently Google has really been asking this one. So that's why I figured we, we could cover it. It's a pretty good question. And we're, we're given a pretty straightforward assignment uh, for the most part. We're, we're given an integer matrix and we need to find the length of the longest increasing path. Uh, from each cell, we can move in any of the four, four cardinal directions. Uh, we may not move diagonally or move outside the boundary, so kind of wrap around from, from one side to the other. Straightforward enough, if we, we get a matrix like this, we would output the, the longest increasing path or the length of it specifically, which would be four. And, and that path here occurs uh, one, two, six, nine. Sorry, one, two, six, nine. Uh, I'll really zoom it in. Notice that it's not five. It's not one, one, two, six, nine. Uh, because one to one is not increasing, it's steady. Um, whereas here, three, four, five, six, uh, again, that's the kind of the best path we can do. Um, so long as increasing one, we can't move diagonally, meaning I couldn't like start at this one, then go to two and go to three, and then go four, five, six, and, and kind of wrap around and, and get this like six length um, entry. So that's the only real requirement. Let's let, we'll, we'll work through this example a bit and, and try to build up the logic behind how, how we're going to make this happen. If we so we, we start by looking at this example, um, and, and and we think to ourselves, okay, so what does it mean for a path to be an increasing path? Um, may seem like a straightforward question, but let's let's begin there. A uh, straightforward path would occur if I have if I'm sitting at one cell. Let's pretend I'm, I'm sitting at the six, for instance, and then I. Then I say, okay, let me check the four directions around me. So above me, it's my left, right, and, and below. Are there any units that are, are increasing in size? So is there any unit that's greater than six, for instance? The answer is yes. There's a nine right here, and there's also an eight right here. Okay, so then we can tell ourselves, cool, I'm going to start at the six, and then I'm, I'm going to go to the nine, or I'll go to the eight. And we, now, then now we're going to have to decide how to make this decision. But let's say for now, we'll, we'll kind of put that to the side. Um, I can make the decision to say, okay, well, I can you know start at the six, and then pen's coming apart. Uh, I can start at the six and and go up to the nine. And so, you know, this would be my path so far. So I'm at the six and then I go to the nine and then I say, okay, from the nine, can I go anywhere else? Can I continue my path? And the answer is no. If I, I check, you know, above me, it's, it's not valid. To the right, I'm dropping down. Below, I'm dropping down. To the left, I'm not increasing. Um, so we, we say that this, this path is length two, and maybe so far this is the best path uh, we've potentially found, okay? And then we could store a result variable, and we're, we're going to keep kind of, uh, every time we, we get a path, we can, we can check what the result is, the result in length of it. And so kind of what I'm implying here is that one way we could think about approaching this problem is to say, let me just find every possible path, and, or, or namely every single possible increasing path. And I'm, I'm going to go one, one, one kind of, unit at a time here and I'm going to tell myself okay but once I get to the four I will I will check this path from four to nine length of two okay I can try this one four to eight okay so I've tried both of these paths now once I get to the six same thing this is really my only real path here I can try this path I can try this path um, once I get to the two I'm like okay go from the two to the six and then I've got this path two six nine and from this one I've got one two six nine which we know will ultimately be our result but Anyways, I, I hope you're getting at like how I'm, I'm doing this. So I'm kind of saying, let me keep looking through every possible increasing path every step along the way, um, and eventually I'll get to the answer. And, and, and this is true. If I look at every single possible increasing path and calculate its length, I will get to the answer. Um, the difficulty with this is that you're going to have a very high time complexity. So I, I think it, hypothetically, I guess we could be in a situation where we always have increasing paths. So I, I, I'd argue I think that would become an exponential time complexity, I think. Um, what we can do though is we're going to find a way to bring it down to, to quadratic time. And, and the reason we can break it down is as follows. Let's, let's think about this path that we calculated. So when I was at the 6, I kind of said that I could go from the 6 to the 9, right? Okay. Um, if I'm at the 2 here, so I'm, I'm sitting at this 2, 
and I, I noticed that the six above me is greater, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to move up to that path. Well, my next job now is to say, let me calculate a, a path from this six, but I've done this already, right? Remember when I found this path, I already said that from this six, the best I could do is two. So if I'm at this two here, and then I, I kind of say, okay, well, if I go to the six, why do I now need to recalculate all the paths that go from the six again? Because what's going to happen here is I'm going to be repeating path calculations over and over again. What if we could avoid that? And so that makes us think, all right, if I'm trying to, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do a certain operation, maybe I've done this operation before, how can I store it? How can I remember what I've done? And, and namely, I'm going to use the kind of the keyword here, which is memoization. Let me memoize these solutions so that when I get back to, to referring to, to my longest path, let me basically say, like, what is the best that I could do from here? And so let, let's think about this. And this is going to be the, the key to, to how we're going to build this out. What if I, what if I created one more array? And, and, and in this array, I, I'd actually replicate the exact size that we had. Um, and now, except instead of inputting any letters, so I'm, 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 I'm drawing these underscores here. The, we're going to initiate these as, as zeros. Okay, We're going to initiate these as zeros, but I'm keeping them blank just so I can fill them in. Uh, visually, I think it'll be a bit easier to work with. Let me now do a walkthrough of my array and, and see if I can figure out what my maximal path would be at any given point. And, and we'll start with this 9. And, and at this 9, I have to say, let me check up. Let me check to the right, let me check down below, let me check to the left. At any given point, I realize I can't really go anymore, so I'm stuck here. We may be tempted to say, you know, this would be zero. Um, however, technically, this one element is actually a path of just one unit. And I guess it is increasing in some sense. And so, uh, you know, to that capacity, it will it will be a one. So the minimum value we can ever have is going to be a, a one, all right? This path right here, it's a path of length one, and it, it it is always increasing technically, so that's why this would be a one. Same logic at this nine here. I check up, I check right, I check left, I check below me. I can't go anywhere. I'm gonna be at a one here. Cool. I get to this four now. Okay, so let's think about this. I get to this four now. I say to myself, okay, I check my cardinal directions, and 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 I, you know, I, I would check the following. I'd say, let me go from the four, uh, from the four to the. Couple, okay, now let me think about what the, the best way to do this now would be. Um, I'm going to change this. I'm going to change it to zero just for now. So this isn't going to impact our result. I'm going to change it to zero just so we can, I think the illustration will be a bit easier. Um, I'm sitting at this four. I check my cardinal directions. And I go to the left and I go, oh, damn. Like, okay, I can move to the left here. Okay, so if I move to the left and if I find myself on this position, I've already found the longest length of, of path here, of increasing path, and that length was one. And so... If that's the case, then this path in and of itself, this four is a is one kind of. If you can imagine it, it's its own path. And then, really, we just want to add on and say, well, the best that I could do from here is this path plus one. So it's one plus one. And the way I got this first one is through is through this entry right here because we've saved it, we've memorized it. So my maximal path increasing path length here is is two. I get to the six by by similar logic. I check all my cardinal directions. I can't go anywhere except for this 9. And so I realize, okay, well, I've calculated this 9 before. From this 9, the best I could do is 1. So the best I, I could do at the 6 would be the 6 itself, which is 1, plus the best I could do in my next step, and that's 2. And so maybe what we want to do is we want to keep like a result variable here. And, you know, it used to be 1. Uh, now we've updated and said, okay, never mind. We can, we can find their paths of length 2. Uh, by similar logic here, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go this way here, and I'm, I'm going to say... From the 6, I can go to the 9, which I've calculated, uh, so that would also give me a 2. Now we're at the 0, and, and from this 0, I might have the same issue here, but um, what I could do is I can say, well, let me check up, and, and from up here, well, actually, I can do a path of length 2 here. So I know the 4 is greater than me, and so if I include myself in this path, all of a sudden, I have a path of length 3 from here, okay? Now... If I, I continue checking my directions, we'll, we'll notice, for instance, that one, this path hasn't been calculated. So we can recursively dive in and, and calculate this path, which we'd quickly find to be one. And now what we'd have to do, and, and this is where we'll add a bit of complexity in our logic and our, our actual algorithm, is we would say uh, at every step, so every time I'm checking a cardinal direction, I'm going to go ahead and, and make this, this recursive call if I possibly can. And every time I'm, I'm checking these directions, I'm going to need to update my my, my memoization or my cache item here with the maximum of whatever this value is here 
uh, versus whatever the, the value would be from all the other all the other recursive calls. And in our terminal condition for our recursive call, we can just say, look, if I've, I, let's say I made a recursive call this way up here, and, and I can say, okay, well, if I've already done this memoization before, i.e. if there is a value in our cache or, or memo at entry ij, then return that value. So now we're getting it back in constant time and not redoing the calculation. And so you, you, you continue by the similar token and you'll see that quickly we, we fill it in like this. This is what our table would look like. When we get to this one, or rather even here, when we get to this two, we'll notice that if we looked up, we had a, a value of two here. And so our, our path would be one plus two because we're increasing this, we're adding one item onto the sequence. And same thing with this one, uh, we could notice that you know we can go this way or we can go this way. So I'm gonna take the maximum between going up here and going to the left. And obviously to the left would be better for me here because three is greater than two. And so that's why we end up with this four over here. Uh, that's gonna be about it. I, I think this is a pretty pretty standard, um, I guess in some shape it, it is a dynamic programming problem. I didn't really take a dynamic programming approach per se. I just really wanted to break it down and say, look, like this, there's a really simple way to do this. And then if we just memoize it a bit, like we did right here, then in fact, we, we we could get a pretty efficient solution, and I I'd argue I think it's the most efficient. I think. Um, let me know in the comments down below if you if you have a, a more efficient, but this will definitely do the trick. So let's get into the code here. I'm going to pull up uh, pull it up here in my notes just to make sure that I don't mess something up in my explanation. And so, what we want to do is is the following. Um, we said that at some point we're, we'd have to create a, a cache. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and call it cache. And the way that we said we're going to create it is going to be like another two-dimensional array of the of the same size as, as our input. And so using, um, using uh, what do you call it? I'm going to bring it for this comprehension. Uh, we want to create the same number of rows as we have in matrix. So we're going to have some row or, or inner array uh, for every, let's say, for i in range and the length of the matrix. So that's the number of rows. And then the number of columns, we're going to also want to replicate. We're going to fill it with zeros initially. So say zero uh, for J in range and the length of matrix I, just like that. So that's going to create our cache. Um, next, we said that we're going to have to keep some sort of result array and we're going to return that result at the end, end of the day. But in the meantime, I'm going to need to make a call and, and check the best path from every single step within this, um, within this matrix. And so what I'll do is a simple nested for loop. So I'll say for i in range of the, the length of the matrix, and we'll say for j in range of the length of matrix at i, then what we need to do is, is the following, is we want to say, let's think about this. We want to take our um, result, we want to take our result and eke, uh, set it equal to the maximum of whatever the result is already, or, excuse me, whatever the result is already, or the result that we're going to get from our recursive call. So if I had some sort of helper function and I want to call it starting at my index ij, we want this, this call to actually return a number. We're then going to compare that return number to the result we had already and keep whichever one is greater. So um, I'm, instead of calling it helper, really I'm, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to call it DFS. So I, I think that the reason we want to do a depth first search is because at any given point, when I take a step inside, you know, let's say I, I was sitting at this zero right here, I want to make a jump into every possible direction here and dive as far deep as I can down that path until I find kind of a maybe a memoized value I've, I've calculated already. Um, and so that's why DFS, I think, here is, is, is the appropriate, um, well, yeah, it, it's just the appropriate way to, to go about this. Um, and so we want I and J, um, whoops, what did I do here? I and J. Um, and so we we kind of said we'd have a, a terminal condition and we need to have a recursive relationship. For the terminal condition, if I make this call and, and I've already calculated a cache value for this, I just want to return it. And so what I'm going to say is if, if cache of ij, and what we could say is if cache ij is not equal to zero. So every time at the end of this call, we're going to have to set it to at least one, right? Because at, at any given point, we have a path of at least length one. Um, instead of doing this, I'm just going to say shorthand for if, if cache of ij. So if there's a value there, uh, we're going to return it. Uh, we're going to return cache of ij. Now, if we didn't return it, then what do we want to do? Then we're going to want to check for cardinal directions. Um, and eventually, if we once we check the cardinal directions, or, you know, why don't I go ahead and do that first? Um, so the code here will be a tiny bit verbose, but I think you guys will, um, I, I think it'll make sense. Um, what I'll do is I'm just going to say if, so I'm, 
I'll do this. I'm going to say um, check, check up, check uh, right, check down, and we're going to check left. Right? So for each of these, to check up, I'm going to say um, if i is greater than 0, so I'm not in my last row, um, and matrix of, of i minus 1, oh, i minus 1 j, which is the element above me, if it's greater than my current element, so if, if it's greater than matrix of, of ij, and this matrix of ij, our current value, we're going to be using a lot. So maybe what I'll do is I'll just set a curve value, and or a curve variable, and I'll say curve is equal to matrix of, of ij. And I'm going to go here, and I'll set that equal to curve. And so if this is the case, then what do I want to do? I want to take my, my cache, my cache ij, and I want to update it. I want to update it to being the maximum of whatever value we have there already uh, versus the the value we're going to get from a recursive call and taking a step in this upward direction and and that's going to be calling dfs at i minus one j whatever the maximum is of those two that's the one that i want to keep and store my cache value and and we're going to follow with similar logic here so i'm, I'm going to try to pump through these quickly so if, if j is less than the uh, matrix of i uh, minus one meaning we can go to the right there are there's still another column to the right and matrix of i uh, j plus one. So again, the element to the right. If it's greater than cur, so there's there's a path which is increasing, then my cache i j is going to well, it's going to equal this. Um, it's going to equal this, except we're going to be saying j plus one. All right. And so maybe I'm going to copy this and 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 paste it a bunch of times. Uh, it'll save me a bit of time. Now I want to check it down. So I'm going to say if, if i is is less than the length of, of the matrix minus one and matrix of i plus 1, j, so going straight down, that's greater than current, then I'm going to want to make this call, except we're going to make it on i plus 1, j. Again, going straight down. Finally, we're going to want to check to the left. So we're going to say if j is, is greater than 0, and matrix of, excuse me, i, uh, j minus 1 is greater than uh, our current value, we'll do this call, except we're going to say uh, j minus 1 here. All right, so I'm going to get, just going to get rid of these comments now here. I think it'll save us a bit of space. I think you guys know what I was doing here anyways. Um, put this together here. Okay, so we've gone through and we, we've updated our cache you know, a, along the way. But what we've done, just to be clear, is we've gone ahead and said update the cache to equal whatever the maximum value is from any one of these, from any one of my cardinal directions. So if I was here, before I had this three, let's pretend I had all these other values, we're going to update it with the maximum of two and two which would give us two. However, we want our answer to be three because I'm essentially saying, grab the biggest path, tell me what its length is, and then actually give me, like I want to increase that number by one then. So no matter what that number is, I want to increase it by one. And so that's why we're going to say cache of uh, ij plus equals one, just to get it up to in include this current value now as kind of imagine the tail of the path. Uh, and that's exactly what I'm going to want to return. I'm, I'm going to want to return cache of ij. So at any given point, where we're making this uh, this call here through our nested loop to the DFS. If it's already been calculated, this cache, we're just going to return it as it is, as we will on every recursive call we make within, within this section here. Um, otherwise, if not, then, then we're going to go through this. We're going to update it, increase it appropriately, and then return that value. All the while, every time we make this call, we're keeping the maximum value of, of the result we had and, and whatever the DFS call is giving us. And I'm, I'm going to try to submit this super quickly. And as you can see, okay, so the runtime ended up favorable here. I, I want to show you guys, see, like, all these deviations here, um, these are all in the same code. I, I don't know why there's so much fluctuation about the memory and the runtime, but I ran the same thing multiple times over just to verify. Um, so, again, this was a quadratic time solution, quadratic space solution. I don't think you can, I don't think you can do any more efficient, maybe on space, maybe. I don't think so, though. I, I, I'm not seeing it. I've tried to work it through. Um, if you guys have any other kind of clever additions, let me know in the comments down below. Um, again, just to summarize, I think this is a, a relatively, relatively straightforward um, recursive problem that we solved with, with a bit of memoization. So it did have some of that dynamic uh, programming flavor to it. If you guys like the video, let me know down below. Smash the like button, comment, share, subscribe. I appreciate it. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.